And here we go. The fastest 40, baby. We're starting the season a little bit later than usual. Obviously, it's because we've been uh, working on some things behind the scenes, getting things going. We've entered into a brand new partnership with Odyssey. Um, so real excited to get this season up and running. Trey, how are we feeling tonight, brother? Hey, man, I'm juiced up. Um, obviously, coming in a little bit late, like you said, it's week three here. We're going into a, a week four here, just wrapped up week three. But uh, hey, nonetheless, we're still excited. Um, like you said, we were, we're uh, starting a new chapter in the fastest 40 with Odyssey. So um, this is going to be a great experience and uh, it, it's going to it's going to bring a whole new whole new avenue for the listener as well. So this is going to be great, man. Absolutely. Absolutely. And we are shifting the focus a little bit for this partnership. I know a lot of you guys heard Let's Chief last year on Red Fridays as we are getting through the season. Essentially, that's going to be our focus moving forward. We're all Chiefs, baby. Uh, both of us born and raised here in KT Mo, so it's nice that we're getting to sort of flip the script back into full-on Chiefs mode here. Um, but to gear you up for week four, we got the New York Jets on Sunday Night Football. This was supposed to be an all-time classic. Of course, there's nothing you can do when Aaron Rodgers tears his Achilles <laughs> three plays into the NFL season, but it just seems like this is a matchup that keeps getting away from us. <laughs> the mahomes Rodgers, it's just never been able to happen. Right, yeah, it's, it's it's one that everybody wants to watch. I remember going to the Packers game a couple of years ago, or that was a couple of years, that was two years ago, right? That wasn't last year, where we were we were anticipating Aaron Rodgers playing in, at Arrowhead, and he didn't end up playing. Um, I yeah. remember the letdown. You know, everybody wants to see that matchup. Same thing happened in 2019 for that Super Bowl run. Uh, we ended up Mahomes popped his kneecap inside of his leg. And uh, Rodgers came to town, and we still almost got him with Matty Moore under center. But, uh, but yeah, let's get into this into this episode a little bit here. We got some Chiefs news that we're going to cover. We'll talk the AFC landscape as we head into Week Four. Kind of those opponents that the Chiefs are going to have to look out for, who they're matching up with, that sort of thing. And then we'll really dive into Sunday Night Football uh, to wrap up the show. But I mean, let's just address the elephant in the room. Something that everyone's been talking about across any podcast you listen to. I mean, even Bill Belichick, he doesn't say a damn word to anybody about anything, but he does have something to say when it comes to Travis Kelsey and Taylor Swift. So let's just get this monkey off our back here. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, that's – I think every night I come home this week, my wife has brought up uh, Travis Kelsey and Taylor <laughs> Swift. So, um, yeah, I'm on the same boat, but – uh I guess it brings some excitement. I saw something that there's like 400% increase in in sales for Travis Kelsey's jersey. So <laughs> the I mean, Swifties, man. Yeah, right. Yeah, good for him. You know. Hey, he's gonna love that check whenever that uh, those residuals hit his pocket from those jersey sales. That's for damn sure. Yes. I yes. mean, every yeah. everything she does, like she got Midas touch for real. Like everything that she does. Still, like she's single-handedly stimul stimulating the economy <laughs> with her tour and then coming out to this game um ended up being a situation when travis kelsey also gains over three hundred thousand followers on his social medias um highest viewed game of week three they really tapped into uh that certain demographic of women that follow taylor swift the most i mean <clears throat> the impact is something that uh, that just cannot be ignored, and and no one's been able to, not even us. And it happened right. like five days ago. We're still talking about it. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I mean, you know, eventually he's going to be an album. You know what I mean? I mean, things are, might go south one day, and he's going to be on the cover of an album, and every song will be about him. But hey, we're not there right now, so we're not going to talk about that part. Yeah, hopefully it's like a. This finally worked kind of album for him then uh, <laughs> as opposed to like another breakup. But, you know, all of us not on the field, all of us are talking about this. All the talking heads, they've got to get their T-Swift and T-Kels uh, taken. Do you think this is a distraction for the guys that are on the field? I mean, you, you look at a team that destroyed the Chicago Bears uh, 41-10 and then immediately after the game, all this paparazzi – 
chasing them out of the stadium. They had to get in the getaway car, as Travis Kelsey put it. And they go yeah. and you know, have a little private party at Third Street Social or Prime Social, rather, here in Kansas City. I'm not saying that, you know, the guys can't go and party and have a good time. But um, does all this attention, like, do you think it is eventually going to turn into a negative, which would be a distraction at that point? You know, I don't think so. You look at the last five years with the Chiefs, man, two Super Bowls, been to three. You know, they've been at the top of the NFL. So they they understand what that is like to you know be at that level. Maybe not the T-Swift level. You know, that's maybe that's like that. stratosphere Mahomes. above. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you're talking about her own economy. But, uh, yeah, no, I, I don't think it's a distraction. I think uh, with the leadership on the team, I think they're they're – headed in the right direction. I think there's they're able to gather those those folks in and, and be able to keep the, the mission the focus, right? Yeah. No. I think with Travis Kelsey, he's a pro's pro. I mean the dude's a veteran, right? He's been in the league since twenty thirteen. Even on his own podcast, um, he made it pretty clear that it was not going to be the focal point of their show moving forward. At the yeah. end of the day, that's his personal life and I think he's been pretty good about not letting that impact him on the field. The guys put up seven straight thousand yard seasons, even through, yep. you know, a publicized breakup with, with his previous girlfriend. And then of course, through all of this, he's still with Taylor Swift in the crowd. Uh, obviously knowing she was up there with his mother put up almost 70 yards passing and caught himself a touchdown. So I feel pretty confident that these guys are going to keep it rolling. I mean, they're they're all focused on on getting another ring and defending that title. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, just to tap into um, you, you brought up the New Heights podcast a little bit there, and I didn't I didn't watch it, so I'll probably misquote some things here. But uh, Katie was kind of giving me some some info uh, last <laughs> night about some the of the streets. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So she was talking about how they had a segment that was uh, called No Dumb Questions or something. And, oh, yeah. you know, some there were some questions coming through, like, what's a field goal? And mm. uh, what's it? What's a down? What's, what's a, a down? down? <laughs> <laughs> how do you how do you describe that? You know what I mean? To somebody that doesn't know football. So, I mean, that's pretty funny. Though. That's that's the audience that, that uh, you were talking about, the Swifties that, that came in. So just a new oh, breed, yeah. man. New breed of Chiefs fans coming through. One hundred percent. Now there's the trend of like, you know, all the wives out there saying, Did you know T Swift put Travis Kelsey on the map to their husbands and getting the reaction out of them, getting them yeah. all screwed up? I know my look would be priceless. Like if you put a still shot of what my reaction would be to that question, you could sell a million copies. <laughs> yeah, I think that's a quick response of who's Taylor Swift. Right, and then it escalates from there, but maybe not. But uh, all right, Dan, let's take a look at uh, AFC landscape. So, what are we looking like right now? You know, uh, big picture AFC. Let's start there. Um, how are we looking right now compared to everybody else? Yeah, man. I mean, as far as like as the rest of the AFC goes, there's really just one undefeated team that we that has a better record than us at the end of the day, and it's the Miami Dolphins at three and zero. Uh, they went in and took care of business against our division rival, Denver Broncos, 70 burger on them. And, you know, the, I, not to keep going back to T-Swift, but that speaks to the magnitude of kind of what that is going on when we had a team for 70 points. Andy Reid surpassed uh, Tom Landry on the all time win list and and it's still the number one story in football. But we're going to we're going to try and keep it sports moving forward here. But the Miami Dolphins, man, <laughs> they've been on a tear. Uh, offensively, just putting up points in bunches. They put up 70 points without Jalen Waddle. Jalen Waddle was in concussion protocol. And <clears throat> I mean, to uh, Mike McDaniel, Tyreek Hill, and the two headed beast running back room that they have there, they're just like a well oiled machine right now and putting up points in bunches. Um, the Pittsburgh Steelers surprisingly lead the AFC North. At two and one, their defense has yep. been dominating. The Ravens are tied with them at two and one as well. Um, but there's just a like tiebreaker. It's super early in the season, obviously. And oh, then yeah. the Colts, yeah. AFC South leaders in the room at two and one. Um, Titans find themselves at one and two. Uh, Jaguars one and two. And then the Texans um, in there as well. But basically, you know, 
Chiefs are holding their own in the AFC West right now at two and one. And <clears throat> there's a lot of other contenders still out there that are figuring things out. I think it's the biggest piece to note about how early we are in the season is that, oh, yeah. you know, everyone's still coming into their own. There's been some injuries here and there that, that obviously are impacting some of these performances, but, um, but it's been it's been a lot of fun so far. I mean, the AFC is like the Wild West. You have all these yeah. great contenders, <laughs> and uh, and we're kind of caught up in the middle of it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, just to tap into the Dolphins a little bit, man. I mean, they look super solid. You know, first team to score that many points, and I think it was like sixty years or something. Yeah, I don't I don't remember if you just mentioned that, but. That's absolutely crazy, you know, and, and who better to do it against than the Broncos? You know, if they could maybe do that against the Raiders, that'd be sweet. But Jeff's um, kiss. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, you mentioned it a couple of times, man, super early. We saw the Bengals come out and uh, struggle last year at the beginning of the season as well. And then obviously a uh, yeah. storm ahead and, and had finished very strong. So, um, you know, Chiefs fans. Got to, got to, got to hold it down. It's got to be a week by week. Can't, can't write anything off until um, second weekend of, of February, baby. We got to grind it all the way through. Yeah. It's funny you mentioned the Bengals too. I mean, I think a big re, I, I don't think it's any surprise. I mean, they're one and two right now. I don't think it's any surprise that they won their first game when they finally got the Burrow and Jamar Chase connection going, right? Jamar Chase put up, over 130 yards or something like that in the air. And yeah. um, that's going to be a big key for their success. The Chargers, on the other hand, they're sitting at one and two. We expected, I think a lot of Chargers fans expected more out of that team coming into oh, yeah. the season. And now they lost they have- Williams for the season with the ACL. And you just wonder what's going to happen with Brandon Staley. Yeah, I mean, I think Chargers fans have expected a lot more for the last seven or eight seasons. So, um, Maybe you know, yeah, so is all the broadcasters who's picked the Chargers to be first in the division the last five years, too. So, Yeah, uh, we'll I will say cool. this offseason, just to touch on that, because we really didn't get to talk offseason on the show as we were kind of working through things with this new partnership. But um, this was the first offseason I didn't see a bunch of Chargers hype on the division, like, predictions. Like, yeah. most people were picking the Chiefs this time around, so I think that's... uh. I think that's a nice change of pace. I think people are starting to actually figure it out by now, but um, you know, we'll see how that all plays out as the, as the years go on. I think they're always going to want to try and take it from us. We saw it with Tom Brady oh, too. Yeah. They wanted oh, to yeah. take it from them. Oh yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. Yeah. I mean, it only took us three Super Bowl visits to kind of get some respect. So uh, <laughs> that's okay. You know, that's okay. Still working on it. We're still working on it too. Yeah. Well, so, I mean, Looking into um, this weekend past the past the AFC here, you know, key matchups that we're watching as Chiefs fans, you know, um, you got to look past the Chiefs, right? We're, we're, we're taking a landscape of the whole NFL, kind of seeing how things are panning out. Uh, what are those games that we, we want to watch and make sure that we're, we're tapping into this weekend? Yeah, man, like the AFC matchups that you're really going to watch. The big one to me is the Dolphins and Bills. You got an AFC showdown. Whoever ends up winning this game is likely going to take the the king seat in the AFC East. That one's a noon showdown. Um, Miami making their way up to Buffalo. Miami's lucky that they're playing Buffalo in September because yes. any time they go up there in the winter time, you know what's about to happen. They're going to get smacked yeah. used to playing in that cold environment. But uh, Buffalo's yeah. got to be pretty pretty tilted about the way the schedule came out <laughs> this year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and to talk about Buffalo a little bit, man, I think there's a lot of expectations there as well for that football team to pan out a little bit more this season or to start the season as well. You know, we're we're about to wrap up the first quarter of the season, but um, this is a big one. This is a big divisional game, big, big game for both of those teams, but big game for, um, you know, us as Chiefs fans or, you know, um, other other teams, you know, Pittsburgh Steelers, big one for them, big one for the Ravens. You know, a lot of people are watching this game for sure. Oh, absolutely. All eyes are going to be on on Tua and, and that Bills defense. Uh, they've been getting a lot of credit in Buffalo for their defense this year. And uh, I think this is going to be their first true test. I mean, 
You look at some of their other opponents, the commanders, that's not really moving the needle for you. That's not really jumping out the page. Um, Zach Wilson led Jets team. Obviously, that's not not a huge challenge for them either. So uh, it's going to be a big test for sure. There's also an AFC North showdown. So the AFC North, Baltimore Ravens hitting, hitting the road and taking on the Cleveland Browns at noon as well. Um, Deshaun Watson looked a little bit better last week. Lamar Jackson and the Ravens, they're going to be looking for a bounce back uh, after dropping one to the Indianapolis Colts. This is going to be uh, one of those games that I think, you know, with the AFC North, it's it's always very physical. It's always a low scoring affair. And uh, oh, yeah. you know, this is a very heated rivalry division um, between these two teams, the Bengals and the Steelers, like these guys always play each other super hard. Absolutely. Yeah. I, a, a very hot and cold Cleveland team, you know, they're, they're, they're super hot one game um, and turnovers uh, and, and get hampered by a bunch of other different things in a different game. And, and Baltimore is a very consistent, uh, you know, control the ball, control the clock, play hard defense, and let's try to drag this thing out and make somebody beat us by, you know, three points, right? So yeah. um, could be a very good game. Could I could see this thing going like um, swinging out of nowhere and, and, and Cleveland really taking something out on, on, on the Ravens here, especially after the loss last weekend. Yeah, I, I would be uh, – <clears throat> I would not be shocked if either of these teams won. I think it's a pretty evenly matched game with it being that divisional game and with it being in Cleveland. Um, but yeah, that's definitely going to be one to watch for the AFC race as we get through the first quarter of the season. Um, Cincinnati Bengals hit the road against the Tennessee Titans. These two teams always play each other really tough, too. I feel like the Titans have a great front seven. Uh, their offense definitely leaves a little bit to be desired. But the uh, the Bengals, obviously, with Joe Burrow nursing that calf, you know, they're going to be a little bit hampered. They're going to be in Nashville. Um, that's a game that I'm going to want to have my eyes on, too. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, any really, for the rest of the season, anytime Joe Burrow's in, in a Bengals uniform, we're going to be watching that game and, and, and yeah. tracking, you know, how things are going over there. Outside of that, though, Tennessee, man, how fun is that? That's a fun football team to watch play football, man. Uh, Vrabel is just a dog. You know, him yeah. and Campbell got to be my two favorite head coach outside of outside of Andy Reid, obviously. Outside of Big Red, baby. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But uh, yeah, fun team to watch. Uh, gritty, gritty football team. But uh, I was waiting for one. it. I was like, I know we're gonna get a gritty in there. Come on. <laughs> uh, it, it stays in the vocabulary, you know. That that word doesn't go anywhere. But uh, <laughs> another one we're kind of gotta dive into and and uh, keep track of. And this one works out. Uh, well, is is it's the game right before us, so it's at three o'clock on Sunday, and it, that's Vegas going to LA to play the Chargers. So <laughs> division game, division game um, within our division. So another one we wanted to keep track of, and and uh, just to kind of jump back a little bit and give a, a highlight of what we're looking at interdivision for us. Chargers are one and two. Obviously, you already told us that the Chiefs are sitting at the top at two and one. Um, Broncos 0 and 3 and Raiders 1 and 2. So we got uh, one and two, one and two teams um, interdivision playing each other. Um, that's going to mean a lot moving forward. So one of those teams is obviously going to go to two and two, and it, it, uh, it's important that you know Chiefs stay up there at three and one and hold the top of that, hold the top of that list. <laughs> well, we can't be too worried about if one of these guys are going to leapfrog us this week for sure. With Vegas hitting the road to to L.A., Jimmy Garoppolo's in concussion protocol right now. That's a big question mark on whether or not they're going to have him. Obviously, uh, with the Chargers, they're dealing with their fair share of injuries as well. Mike Williams gets hurt. Um, they're, I, I mean, from a fantasy football perspective, I'm wondering, do I start Quentin Johnston? Do I start um, Josh Palmer, who's going to be the recipient of those of those targets yeah. that are being lost there? And then, yep. you know, it's just with the Chargers, it almost feels like something inevitable is going to happen to them every single time. But they're still going to be competitive. Um, and I don't I just see zero scenarios where the Chargers drop drop this game against the Raiders. Um, 
So, yeah, I mean, as far as Vegas goes, they're dealing with their own fair share of problems, too. I don't oh, know if you've sure. seen anything with Chandler Jones on social media, but uh, he's losing his marbles a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, those Jones brothers tend to do that from time to time. <laughs> Well, hopefully, hopefully he gets it all figured out. Um, did want to stop real quick and give a shout out to our friends over at E Coffee. Um, that's www.eeroastcoffee.com. You can check them out on IG at EE Roast Coffee. Um, they're Casey Local Coffee Company, putting up some good stuff. I know we get a bag monthly from those guys, so it's always nice to wake up in the morning with their coffee. Uh, feel free to check them out against www eeroastcoffee.com Trey, how are we feeling about Sunday night football, brother? You know what, man? We have so many primetime games this year. And last week was our only noon game. And mm. back in the day, you know, all we had was noon <laughs> games, dude. And you could <laughs> sometimes you could do we didn't even have that. Sometimes they got blacked out. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Yeah. Big pin throwing the ball. But, uh, you know, you could get some stuff done in the morning, watch the game for a few hours, and then you had the rest of the afternoon or evening to do stuff, too. But now I got to stay up till 1030 at night, man. I go to sleep at 830 or 9 o'clock, bro. So these are a struggle. These are a struggle. Into a, a crotchety old man. <laughs> I have, man. Well, I'm up and I'm up with I'm up with the Eagles in the morning at three, baby, getting some. So I love that. So I I gotta go to bed early, dog. Oh my gosh! Quick side note, dude. I'm taking the trash out last Friday, walking it up the hill. You know my driveways, like uh, it's that literally that story your dad tells you where he walked up hill in the snow. Like that's the hill you picture yeah. <laughs> in my driveway. So I'm walking that thing up, and I hear. Ur, ur, ur. I was like, okay, I'm tripping. Heard it again. Someone in my neighborhood recently purchased a rooster. Whoa, and big live, purchase for living in the city. I live in the city, man. I, I pay the 1% Kansas City tax that all you guys are paying. Yeah, yeah. And most of you don't have to deal with farm animals. I'm dealing with that every morning. <laughs> so you're up with the rooster in my neighborhood every morning. Yeah, yeah, you need to get over there and get some eggs from them, bro. I know roosters don't make eggs, but, you know, they got hens. If they <laughs> they got to have hens. So there's yeah. a reason they got that thing. Yeah. All right, guys, so jumping into the injury report. So before we get into that, I want to another sponsor that we got going on. So the Atlas Saloon, downtown Excelsior Springs. This is my water and hole. This is where I go drink cold beers. Uh, good buddy Keith Hudson and Jimmy McCullough down there doing great things. So the saloon was built in 1894. They got 10 beers on tap. They special specialize in German lagers. They got five on tap right now, including their Oktoberfest, which is going to run out before October. Uh, so get down there and get you some Oktoberfest. Yeah. So Scottish Ale right now is their top rated beer. And then uh, huge Chiefs watch parties every home, every, every home every away game they're always having a party down there so if you don't have tickets make sure you get down there if it's an away game make sure you get down there all right so dan injury report what's that looking like for us right now heck yeah always a blast at the atlas saloon appreciate you guys injury report um unfortunately we had to put prince tego wago on the ir he injured his quads so he's going to be out those next four games Kadarius tony his toe, there was some swelling uh, this week. He has been limited all week in practice. Chris Jones was limited on Wednesday. He came back Thursday, should be ready to go. More of a maintenance thing, you know. He didn't have the training camp with the guys. He's really just doing kind of, um, really just kind of doing his preseason right now, getting into the swing of yeah, things. Like, yeah. obviously, he was working out down there in Miami, but uh, – but still getting kind of brought up to speed. Nick Bolton, man, this is the key, the key loss here. Yeah. Bolton with that ankle injury did not practice, has not practiced all week. Tomorrow's going to be the telltale on whether or not he's going to be able to come in. We did miss him in that Chicago game, but man, Drew Tranquil looked good in his absence. I mean, if, yes, sir. if anything, you know, we give Nick Bolton that extra week of rest. I feel pretty good about what Drew Tranquil's 
uh, bring into the team on the defensive side of the ball. Yeah, no, I couldn't agree more. And I was pretty high on Drew Tranquil when he came in and um, honestly kind of shocked he's not a starter already. But uh, couldn't agree more on Nick Bolton being out, man. He's such a, a huge piece of that defense. Obviously, the number one guy coming in, uh, calling plays for the defense. But also just an absolute animal. Side by the sideline, he's the fastest speed. Sky pound for pound out there. He's an absolute lightning bolt when he cracks you, dude. Uh, Nick Bolton's by far my favorite player on the defense, and it's tough not having him out there. But again, man, it, it's, it's you know, we've talked about this for years now on the show. It's next man up, and that's what exactly what we saw at Drew Tranquil, and, and that's what exactly what we see at every position that we have injuries. So it's, it, it's important that we see that out of the football team. And that's how you, that's how you continue on to win Super Bowls, man. Um, Cause you're not going to make it the whole season without injuries. So big deal. No, absolutely. Um, with, with Nick Bolton be, being out most likely for this game, I'm not worried about that linebacking core. Obviously it's more than just, Drew Tranquil too, right? It's Willie Gay. We got Leo Chanel. They've actually been doing something interesting with Leo Chanel, running him on the edge a little bit this year, getting him some play uh, that way. I think that's been pretty awesome to kind of see him um, really develop as that edge rusher and get some pressure there for uh, for the defense. Hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. And, and uh, talking again about Chris Jones here. You know, it's it's big for him to continue the success that he started um, with his short season. You know, you talked about him being in preseason still. And, and right. Yeah. I mean, he's had a killer preseason, if that's the case. So we, we got to continue that forward for sure. Absolutely. So before we get into the nuts and bolts of the Sunday night football game, let's talk about some betting. And, you know, for those of you on the Kansas side where it's legal, uh, the odds are looking pretty much like the Chiefs are going to destroy the New York Jets. I don't think that's a shock to anybody, but Vegas tends to agree with uh, with the population. Kansas City minus 450 yeah. on the line, New York Jets plus 350. I think you'd be hopelessly optimistic to put any money on the money line for the Jets. Now, this is obviously before we get into breaking down why we feel that way. I don't know that we really have to explain too much. <laughs> on that front but uh sure. um, but definitely the chiefs are the runaway favorites here uh favored by nine and a half points on the road um so you know rule of thumb is you get that three-point cushion uh, for the uh for the home team so if this was an arrowhead we'd be looking at a double digit favorite situation for the chiefs which is common you know these days it really is but at the same point you know i i think you know, it was maybe week 13 or 14 last year that we were talking about how the Chiefs had only hit like three or four games, um, like covered the spread. So, and everybody's so hype on on Pat Mahomes and the offense. And, you know, that I think we're starting to see a swing in the other direction. You know, this, this defense that we have is only allowed three touchdowns, right? So, I, you it's know, it's about I time, too. Yeah. So, we've, I think we've invested uh, so much capital on that side of the ball. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think uh, at some point Vegas is going to have to respect that and, and, you know, dial things down a little bit. Now, obviously, last week we, we completely destroyed the Bears, but that's a bad football team. And, and yeah, can't expect that every week. Right. No, no, you'd be. It would be a shocking to see that every week, although I would love it. If that were to happen yeah. every week, um, that would I would be, nice. be surprised for sure. Uh, the total, yeah. the point total for that game sits at 42 and a half. I mean, just looking at the the spread and the point total, 42 and a half, are you taking the over or the under there? Uh, 42 and I'm taking the over on 42 and a half. I, I honestly haven't looked at any spread, so I'm, I'm loving this right now. I want to hear this. I'm going to go off the cuff. <laughs> 42 and a half. You're taking the over chiefs at minus nine and a half. I like them to cover. I think this is going to be a 20 point win for the Kansas city chiefs personally, from a betting perspective. Um, these feel pretty good to me. Um, usually when it's a 20 point win, a big win, um, that point total hits the under, but I think there's a good chance for it to be like a 41 to 
to 17 game and then we end up getting the over you know what i mean like it could be pretty similar to what we saw last week even though we just said we were not expected to see that every week i think this is kind of a comparable (laughs) team where we could see that yeah sure no i i I think i would agree you know we're talking about winning by 10 points and i i think that's feasible to see the chiefs win by 10 points absolutely so i'm going to rapid fire some player props over to you before we get into the breakdown (laughs) of the game patrick mahomes 275 and a half passing yards over under. Over. Zach Wilson, 175 and a half passing yards over under. Jeez, give him some respect. I'm going, oh, under. <laughs> Jarek McKinnon, 10 and a half rushing yards over under. I, you have to take the over on that. He could bust that in one run. One run. It could happen. Uh, let's go receiving yards. Justin Watson, 22 and a half receiving yards over under. Got to take the over on that. And then Patrick Mahomes, half an interception over under. Over. All right. Let's move it into yeah. game, man. The good stuff. Yes. The reason we're here. <laughs> so the the New York Jets, I mean, obviously they they got an injury with with Aaron Rodgers. That's an unfortunate piece for them. Um, how do they win this game? I think it's going to take an act of God for them to pull this out. I mean, really, <laughs> if we have to quantify it to a few moments, it's probably a situation where the receivers had some stone hands, kind of like what we saw in that Detroit game. Maybe our yes. defense gets a little soft in the running game, allows Dalvin Cook and Brees Hall to really pop off. I know a big criticism of this Jets team so far has been that they're not really running the ball well, even though they have two prime running backs. And then third point really that I could see happening is, you know, the defense pressures Mahomes into a couple bad throws here and there that ultimately yeah. cost them and like a pick six scenario. But I mean, we're talking at all three of these things would have to happen and someone would have to get hurt and maybe a meteorite crashes into the back of the stadium. Like those are all things that have to happen for the Chiefs to lose this game in my mind, at least. Sure, sure. I mean, I think for me, the keys for, I mean, for the Jets to win, they're going to have to control the clock. And they have to win the turnover better. I think those are the two things. Mm-hmm. And really, it's some, most of the time, those go hand in hand. You know, you you got to get Pat Mahomes off the football field if you want to try to beat the City Chiefs, right? So, so um, if they can manage to do those two things, it's going to give them a shot. Are they going to win the game because they did? If because they won the turnover better and 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 uh, held the clock. Probably not. You know, they're gonna have to, they're gonna have to get lucky on top of that. But uh, those two things are are gonna kind of put them in a position where they where they could come out on top. On top of that, they I, I think the pressure thing for Pat Mahomes is a big deal as well. Absolutely. No, I think uh, I trust their offensive line against them. They do have a good defense, right? The uh, the New York yep, Jets have yep. a pretty solid front seven. Good group of linebackers led by C.J. Mosley. Obviously, uh, their defensive line's anchored by Quinton Williams, probably top five defensive tackle in the league. Sauce Gardner's on the back end. D.J. Reed's quality corner as well. Um, They have a lot of talent there. So, I mean, those guys are really going to have to play their ass off um, if they're wanting to take this from us, I think, at the end of the day. 100%. Yeah, yeah. Tell us about those keys to victory, man. So keys to victory for the Chiefs is going to be um, something that you and I and Strato and a couple other buddies have been talking about the, this season is you got to run the damn ball. You got to you got to establish the run game, and we saw that last week for the first time this season, and and look what happened, right? So, um, great. You know, I've been screaming through the TV for three weeks now, and finally somebody listened to me when I'm talking to Andy through my TV. So. Um, Come on, Big Red. Running, I know yeah. you hear me. Yeah, so running the ball is number one for me. And uh, and that's primarily for me is Pacheco. And then number two is um, number one, McKinnon. And you know, CEH can 
fill up the water bottles and hand them out as they come off the field for all I care. Yeah, but clean up um, in the fourth quarter. Yeah, yeah, when everybody else is resting. Yeah, absolutely. But outside of that, it's protecting the football and controlling the clock. And and controlling the clock goes with the run game. You got to run the ball and you got to control the clock and keep Pat Mahomes on the field. No, absolutely. You, I think I think with the running backs too, like. We saw what they did last week. They were a threat in the passing game, too. You know what I mean? Like, they were still, even though they Always were getting the been. running game. Do what? Always have been. Jerry Always McKinnon's have been, yeah. out of the backfield. I mean, Jarek McKinnon's obviously great in the passing game. I think that's why his rushing yards are so low. I'm taking the over on that, too, by the way. But um, <laughs> I think, you know, just staying disciplined in the passing game is big for Patrick Mahomes, making sure he's not forcing anything, playing hero ball. We find ourselves down by a touchdown in the first quarter, like staying poised, which he's pretty, pretty good about that. You know what I mean? Like it's rare that Patrick Mahomes gets rattled. Now we've seen it on occasion where he's like a little panicked to get back in the game. And usually he can get it done in those situations. We've been pretty fortunate um, as Chiefs fans to have that the last five, six years. Um, But the defense, man, just seeing that momentum that they've created so far, maintaining that continuing to get pressures. Chris Jones has two and a half sack it, sacks uh, so far this season. George Karloftis has really been popping off. Trent McDuffie, just want to highlight him too, highest rated cornerback this season, according to PFF, which, you know, P- say what you want about their ratings, right? Uh, you love them when they're favoring your players. You hate them when they're not. So sh- anything short of a miracle is really going to be the only way the jets take care of business in this game. So I'm full on behind our boys, the chiefs, we're going to move it to three and one. Um, those are going to be our keys to victory for this coming weekend, man. Before we wrap up, I do want to give a quick shout out to better homes and garden. If you're looking for your next home, uh, the person you need to reach out to is none other than Katie Lawrence. Our good friend, Trey Lawrence here, his wife is going to be taking care of you at better homes and garden. Um, Katie serves all of the Kansas City metro area and is making sure that you find your forever home. No matter what the situation is, one bedroom, two bedroom, three, she's going to make sure that you get taken care of and get put in an area uh, where you can really plant your roots and and flourish. So uh, make sure you give her a call and check check her out. Um, man, Trey, I love getting back in the studio with you. It's, it's going to be fun putting this partnership together with Odyssey. Uh, let's go get a dub with our boys this weekend, all right? Let's do it. Go Chiefs. Oh, yeah. We'll see you next week.